the Galapagos tortoise is without a doubt an impressive species. They average about 5 feet in length and weigh over 250 kilos. But despite being the largest member of the tortoise family, it's not its size that the Galapagos tortoise is known for. The Galapagos turtle is most famously associated with its vitality and longevity. It's not a surprise since they're the longest lived of all land vertebrates and they average over 100 years in the wild. The oldest on record died at the ripe old age of 188 in Tonga. It's entirely possible that among the remaining tortoises on the Galapagos Islands, there exists an old timer that was just a hatchling at the time of Charles Darwin's famous visit in 1835, when he wrote The Origin of Species. But despite this impressive resume and common opinion, it's not the longest living species on the planet. If you head up north to the icy waters of the Arctic, you can find another mammal that lives well into its hundreds. New science has come out that these whales can be up to 250 years old, if you can imagine. But even that doesn't come close to the oldest living animal on record. This ocean cohawk, called Ming and scientifically known as Arctica Icelandica, lived for 507 years before coming to a, let's just say, less than climactic end. Now, there are a couple of species that technically live longer than all three of these creatures. I say technically because the animals that I'm talking about are biologically immortal. What's the matter with these scissors? The bread won't cut. Now, we all know about the immortal jellyfish, right? It gets to sexual maturity and then it clones a younger version of itself and starts over again. That's not what I'm talking about here because, well, to me, that seems like cheating. I'm talking about animals that never age. Eternal youth sort of stuff. Back to basics. Every time a cell in a living creature dies, it's replaced with a new one by copying one of its healthy cells. Cells are made up of DNA. At the end of each strand of DNA, there's a tip known as a telomere. Think of them as the little bits of plastic on the end of your shoelaces. And in this process of copying cells, these telomeres get shorter and shorter. The gradual erosion of telomeres over constant cycles of copying is thought to be the root cause of aging, as just like with the plastic tips on the end of your shoelaces, once these telomeres are shortened to oblivion, the end of the DNA becomes too frayed and badly damaged to continue copying cells. This is the reason why diseases and illnesses are far more common the older you get. However, there are some species out there that produce an enzyme known as telomerase. This prevents DNA damage by repairing those telomeres every time they copy, meaning that the cells can perfectly replicate themselves again and again and again indefinitely. It's like those plastic shoelace tips getting replaced every time they get scuffed. So, who are these everyday superheroes living among us? Well, lobsters are one of them. Lobsters typically weigh half a kilo, but in 2009, a lobster was caught off the coast of Maine that weighed almost 10 kilos. Now, it's difficult to age a lobster for various reasons, but some sources put the age of this lobster at 140 years old. Perhaps the most impressive though is the naked mole rat. Despite being regarded as one of the most ugly animals on the planet, these little guys are both technically immortal and one of the only living species known to man to be biologically resistant to cancer. Though, having said all of this, the longest living mole rat in captivity only lived till 32. Which, to be fair, is about three times longer than expected for an animal of its size. And lobsters typically live for around 40 years, which, again, is a lot longer than other crustaceans. But it's true, these animals technically don't age. But unfortunately for this little guy, although you might be immune to aging, you can't be immune to death. Did you know that George Washington tried to ban swearing? That where you come from can determine what swear words you choose to use? Or that swearing can even be used to reduce pain? It's going to be a great episode next week on the science of everything. <laughs>